Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and welcome to a brand new step-by-step -step here at Genesis Models. Now this one has been voted by you guys. It is the Leopard 2 A7 German main battle tank. It is by Ming Models and it is in 130 fifth scale. As I say, um, I'll give you guys the option to pick what you wanted me to build the next step by step and you pick this one which is kind of interesting because i mean here at genesis models we do we mainly do aircraft world war ii modern that kind of stuff um, we touch on armor now and then but we haven't actually touched on one for a while so it's kind of nice to get the good old armored vehicles up out and uh, again and, and go for, go go after um, building one of them now in this step by step um i'm sort of when it comes to armored vehicles um, as you probably know it's not like aircraft where you know everything's got to be nice and seamless rescribing filling sanding all that kind of stuff um, it, they are pretty much bricks that you just glue pieces on um, so with this build I am sort of anticipating we're going to be doing a free color stage um, camo pattern on this which will be kind of nice and interesting I'm not sure how I'm going to spray it um, in the sense of going down the route of maybe doing a modulation or pre-shading, post-shading, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll probably look into that um, more later on, because these are free stage camo. Um, and then the weathering, you know, we're gonna be sort of going um, to town with the weathering as always, you know, loads of nice weathering products and everything, trying everything out. Um, in the past, whenever I've done a step-by-step, -step, admittedly, I have, uh, really muddied up the road wheels and the tracks and everything and I'm kind of thinking maybe this time round I'm gonna sort of lighten it a bit just to sort of show you um, a different way of going about it and it should be make it a little bit more interesting so um, nothing really sort of special with this build it's just a nice armored vehicle um, showing you um, you know from the basics all the way up to advanced pretty much anything and everything that you need to know to build this model um, I'm going to be showing it over the the next couple of um, episodes so we have got a really sort of nice model to be building here you know it is by Ming models which um, is pretty much a brand spanking new tool that looking at the the the, um, the sprues and everything it does look like it's going to be a nice sort of pleasurable build shall we say i don't anticipate any sort of fit problems i'm not seeing any major flash or eject pin marks in bad places it should build together quite nicely and quite quickly um fingers fingers crossed so if you do want to go off and sort of watch this video um you know sadly this one is for the subscribers i mean here at genesis models we do have a subscription system where people do pay three pound 99 a month to watch videos exclusively for them uh, this is one of those videos this episode episode one episode one is free um, but all the rest you'd have to go off and subscribe if you want to go down that route but um, if you don't remember you know Genesis Models has loads and loads of free videos out there if you want to go check them out but if you do want to watch this and you aren't already a subscriber uh, simply go to genesismodels.co.uk and in there you can go to description section you know pay via PayPal, you get yourself a username and password, and then you get access to not just this video, actually. We have got tons and tons of step-by-steps, rapid video builds, and loads of other content, loads of other builds going on, um, and you can learn an absolute ton about scale modeling. So with this build, let's just jump um, straight in with some nice sort of building. Let's just start off a nice bit basic, ease you in, uh, and we'll do a couple of um, cool stuff uh, along the way way. Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bob Waldron and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be having an inbox review and we're going to have a bit of armor this time. What we've got up is the Leopard 2 A7 German main battle tank. Now, this is by Ming Models. It's in 135th scale and we have had this... Um Let's see if we can get you on camera actually we have got this sort of ak interactive has you know 
gone off and gone here we found a load of nice matching colors for this as well um, now this kit is around about the 50 pound mark it is a big kit i mean it's actually quite a big box it's full of plastic um, so although it's 50 pounds i do think it is quite worth it we've also got um, a kit that was new tooled in 2015 so it's pretty sort of new this particular kit the a7 was um, reboxed in 2016 and had it um, added new parts to it also um, and then I did an a7 plus I do believe it was in 2019 with new added parts as well so you got a couple of versions there um, now what we've got so far we've got these um, a nice bunch of photos we'll look at them in a bit now I'm not going to get everything out in this kit because there's loads and loads of um, bits and bobs on here I just want to give you an idea of the kind of quality we're looking at so let's just get out a screw or two just to start off with um, here we go we've got one just here what we've got um, is actually really sort of rather crisp with these these um, parts as you could see we just zoom right in we've got the oh, I think it's the M3 or something uh, machine gun just here very very crisp um, showing off loads and loads of details on these MG's right and it's pretty much the same throughout i mean we've got a bit of stowage here and everything um, and then we've got all these lots of different parts all in and around and everything and it's pretty much the same all over with this you know same level of standards lovely detail going on there we turn it over ejector pin marks i mean there are ejector pin marks but they i mean this may look a little bit bad just here but this is going to be on the inside we're not going to see it we've only got to cut them off um, no problems at all again same thing here cut them off we're not going to see it not a big problem whatsoever um, again back to the mgs we've got no nasty ejector pin marks where you wouldn't want them on the detail and everything um, so they're, they're looking rather rather good um, let's jump into the the main attraction shall we say we've got our actual turrets just here and this is where we see all the lovely detail and what kind of a lovely quality we have as you can see we've got all this nice textured surface on here if we sort of zoom you in a bit closer you know we do have all the nuts and bolts and everything where you could see them absolutely gorgeous absolutely beautiful um, and, and you know it is so so crisp as well very very tidy um, looking around the side you know the details still there um, it does look like we've had like bits sort of cut out in the toilet area but that's, that's not going to be a problem at all yes we do have ejector pin marks on the inside again they're sticking out quite a bit right but again we're not going to see them we can cut them off no biggie shouldn't hinder anything at all the bottom hole again you know the same level of surface detail as you can see absolutely stunning uh, washes and weathering and everything is going to absolutely look gorgeous on this and come out really really nice as you can see uh, very very small tiny bits of detail absolutely lovely I am actually really loving the level of quality with this kit the bottom part of the hull um, you know we've got loads of detail on the bottom part of the hull as you can see with all our running road road wheels and all the bits and bobs and all this gorgeous stuff going on inside there Right, even on the bottom, um, you know, we've got the detail on the bottom side of this as well. Absolutely stunning, absolutely love it. Can't really fault that so far. Hold on, we've got lots and lots of stuff. Um, next up, we do have a massive bag full of our tracks. Now, love them or hate them, I do prefer my tracks to be like this, right? And there's like loads and loads of sprues exactly the same so i'll just show you the one but these are all our rubber sort of track links well not well they do well they're plastic actually they're not rubber um, but here we are our track links right there's two different um, there's three different parts to build in these right so you start off with this part this is like the inner part and then we've got the bottom and the top part um, and we sandwich these inner parts in and uh, you basically end up with this moving sort of system and as you can see 
you know, no nasty ejector pin marks on them. They're all very crisp, hardly any flash. We do have a, a bit of an ejector pin mark on the inside. I'm just feeling to see if they're like sticky outy ones. Because if they're sticky outy ones, you've got to sand them all down. If they're just like recessed, that shouldn't be a big deal. They might, yeah, you might have to do a little bit of, mm, you know, sort of a little bit of sanding. Because this one here does feel like that's a little bit on the raised side. And that's going to hinder you gluing them together. They're not terrible, not all of them. I've just kind of noticed that one really. But yeah, you might find one or two. So you might have to kind of take care of some um, ejector pin marks a little bit. Because they're raised. And when you try and bring them together, it's going to sort of leave a gap. Um, but then you've got this um, little tool here where you can put them all in and you met your track links and everything. I'll show you in the instructions in a bit. But rather, of course, I prefer these because um, when you do every single individual track link, you can really just have your tracks waving in any way you want them, um, which is why I personally like them. Um, then, as I say, we've got loads and loads of bags. We've got all sorts of uh, running road wheels just inside here. I don't want to get them all out because you've seen the, the level of surface detail and it goes for all the different parts as well and all sorts of running road wheels in there. We do have quite a few nice clear parts as well, right? which is rather, rather cool because it does look like pretty much any sort of peephole that's on this tank is going to have a clear part. So we can sort of have that representative little sort of you know windows and stuff on the tank we've got our road wheels just here loads and loads of road wheels you know same level of lovely detail um we've got i think this is the um added parts where they've kind of got the operated sort of extra hot armor and stuff on the uh, the leopard there all right all nicely looking good same sort of level of detail from what i can see again i don't want to get them all out and show you because it makes these inbox reviews just go on and on and on um again same same sprue here okay it's a different color sprue uh, i'm not sure why they did that maybe some other different version or something but again we've got the same level of detail going on with that um we've got on this sprue just here this is like side skirts and a little the bottom armor or something underneath the main hole uh, the hole uh but again same level of detail actually on this one we do have the main gun as well so we'll have a quick look at that also just to show you it does come in two halves right which means you do have to bring them together shouldn't be a problem if you do all your standard sort of like you know feeling sand inscribing this little bit of an area here does kind of look a bit like some sort of fabric on there so maybe look a little bit funny sort of getting this nice and seamless and sanding it nice and seamless and then you've got this nice flat seamless end and then it kind of wraps around into this fabric area um, yeah you might have to throw some techniques in there or something just to give that fabricy type look uh, but again as you can see you know lovely lovely detail on this kit i do actually love it every little bit that's what i'm liking about ming right now is pretty much whatever they produce you know it's so so crisp so nicely highly detailed and everything it's really they are really nice models and then we've got this when they say they've got photo etching there they're not throwing out a little bit of a gimmick of here's a little bit of photo etch hey we can advertise this of having photo etching there we actually have got a load of goodies in this little bag just here which may as well get them all out i do like how we've got proper metal um sort of you don't you normally sort of get like string or something like that for all your, your tow ropes and everything but this one is proper proper metal and as you can see that is going to look really sort of nice and realistic uh, more realistically looking and sort of flow and sit better on the model so that's a nice bonus we've got these proper stick on mirrors as well which is also rather cool nice added touch we've got two photo etch frets which i'm uh, not exactly sure what these parts are or anything like that but as you can see they do feel like nice and um, not too thick they're going to be hard to cut off and actually deal with but they are looking good and i think we've got some um, intake vents here and stuff for the engine loads of nice lovely bits of photo etch which is just going to set it off 
even more with all the detail that we've already got. Um, decals, you know, decals are nothing really to um, sing, sing uh, to have a dance about with when it comes to armor because we don't have much. But what we do have, looking at that, does look rather good, nicely in registry. The colors look good. Um, should be hopefully no problems with that but there aren't that many so if they are bad decals you haven't got that many to deal with then we have our markings here nice bit of color call out what we've got here um, nice three stages of camo um, they're nice to take off the hull here so you can actually see where the camo goes which is a nice touch you know a nice bit of thought going into that simple sort of showing you where the decals are going uh, then we've got all the color call outs here which i do believe you know you've got the ak paints that they call out for there but do your research as always right um, not too bad not too shabby then the instructions we do have what looks to be some in black and white plain colored paper um, looking through you know, we do get the usual nice description about the tank itself um, a little bit of a sort of a look at it which is quite interesting actually they do give you the option having a gunfire simulator which is interesting because that is what you put on the tanks for training purposes i remember um you know loading these up back in the day um, when, when i'm training exercise and it's all about sort of like you got lasers and everything on the on the gun and you shoot up with tanks and as you shoot these uh, gun fire simulators basically pop a load of smoke up into the into the air just to kind of show that the guns sort of fired so um, it just helps you have that bit of realism of like spotting tanks because of the smoke off the gunfire and everything so it's quite nice how they've given that added little feature um, to this build that you can have them in that that way so yeah, rather cool, nice little touch. I did quite like that. Um, as with all armor, you know, we starting with the the whole road, the the running gear and everything, and on all that kind of stuff. Admittedly, you look at these instructions and they do kind of maybe look a little bit cluttered and like Ooh, what's going on. But you know, if you look at them and study them, it does look like they are showing you pretty much where everything goes quite quite nicely. Um, again, coming back to our running road wheels uh, uh sorry uh, our tracks just here this is what i was on about how they go together now i know there's a lot to sort of put on here but uh, we do have this nice template just here and as you can see you lay down the bottom parts of the track then you put in these nice middle pieces and then you put the top piece on top um, being careful where you sort of glue them because if you put too much glue in and it oozes out it's going to sort of lock the tracks in but if you get the glue just right you can really have this lovely flowing bit of tracks going on there um, and yeah you know you put the hole together it looks pretty simple showing you where the photo etch and that's going which again you know it, it doesn't look too clear when you first look at it but if you look at it it does sort of show you oh that's photo etch and that's not um, so so you do have to study it, as I say uh, putting all your bits and bobs on the turret looks you know pretty sort of standard i mean when it comes to building armor it's um um not as hard as aircraft i don't think it's just a lot of putting all these little boxes on all over it and gear and everything um but it doesn't look like there's going to be many problems and if you do you know as always with armor you can whack some stowage on there just to hide any any imperfections right uh, but yeah there we go very very nice looking good quick run through yes you can have the turret moving obviously but yeah looking good so yeah for 50 pounds um, it's not a bad price actually because you know there is a lot of plastic it's a pretty um, new sort of tool with absolutely you know pretty damn good um, you know um, surface detail for this kit absolutely crisp as anything shouldn't be a problem to put together and you know what it does look pretty nice and beefy so Definitely a big thumbs up for Ming there. Um, nice to also see AK getting in on the colours and everything, which is quite nice. Um, I think even Ammo does it with um, another company or something. Uh, but, you know, that's probably another discussion anyway before I sort of go off track. But, yeah, definitely a big thumbs up. Definitely a big recommendation. And I'd love to build this kit, actually. Um, I am thinking next step by step. 
probably something like to do with some sort of armor but um you know we will see i'd love to build it in all honesty and if you brought it i'm sure you'd love to build uh, build it as well so yeah until next time my name is bobby Waldron, in the genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed so the instructions want us to start off with all our um, dry sprockets, idle wheels, road wheels, all this kind of stuff. Um, nice easy place to start. So um, let's jump in and get in our first sprue. All right, so I'm just kind of going from the numbers off the instructions and it wants us to cut out piece A2 and A1. So let's just bring you in. Uh, what we have here, let's cut off a A2. Right, now, when it comes to cutting stuff off of the sprue, nice and easy. Right, we've got some nice cutters here. This one's by Citadel. Uh, they are quite expensive. I think they're about £20. Very, very expensive. You can buy cheaper versions out there, which kind of does just as good a job. I can't remember who these were by. I can't remember if they was Trumpeter or something. All sorts of cutters. We even have these really fancy ones by um, Dis Despair or something. I can't quite pronounce that. Uh, these ones are quite cool, but they're so cool I don't like using them because they're like little razor blades and stuff, but they're about £50. Very sort of expensive. Um, it's kind of up to you, but when really, I mean, it's it's not a big deal really um, I've, I've used all sorts I just kind of prefer using these Citadel ones um, they have lasted a long long time uh, but that's up to you um, you, you know, pretty much any online hobby shop will, will do them now when it comes to cutting them off you don't want to really sort of be going right up to the piece like that right because if we go up to the piece like that there is a potential that we could actually cut into the piece that we want right if we sort of maybe turn the cutters this way hopefully what you can see is we're going to end up cutting it um, about a mil away from the piece all right so if we cut them um, that way we should cut them about a mil away from the piece and as you can see we've still got the little tabs left over rather than if we did it the other way around Right, we would be cutting right up against that piece there, and that there could actually leave a mark. Now, it's um, in air aircraft scale modeling, that could be a big, big problem. Um, I'm not too worried about these road wheels because we're going to rough them up in a bit anyway. But you know, you want to sort of make sure you're at least cutting so you leave a bit of the tab on the end. Now, when it comes to removing these tabs, there's two ways of going about it, really. We can use sanding sticks or we can use blades. Now, I personally prefer blades. I'll just show you both ways. Right? The first is we can come along with a blade, and what I like to do is just start shaving it. I don't like to sort of come straight in and cut right up to our piece because, again, we can sort of damage the piece we're after. I sort of like to shave a bit off the top and... You know, shave, 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 and slowly, slowly get down to the point where we're really close to our piece, like so. And we've pretty much, you know, got that all nice and done there. And then what I like to do is with, at sort of like a, a nice 45 degree angle, I'll just like scrape across. And actually the blade then virtually sands the plastic. And as you can see there, we literally sort of, um, you know, remove the tab and no damage to our piece just there. And I can show you that again. Shave it, shave it, shave it, shave it. All right? Don't go straight down to the piece. And then we should get close to our piece, and we're just very carefully sort of shaving off those last little bits. All right? And then just to finish it off, we scrape it. There we go. And there we go, That's, that piece now has all been nicely removed from the sprue, ready to be glued together. Now there is the sanding side of it, um, sanding sticks. Uh, when it comes to sanding sticks, I do like the Flurry Model brand. We've got all, they do all sorts of sanding sticks, pretty much for any sort of job, right? Pretty much all the online shops 
will sell them so you can get them pretty much from anywhere um, i do know there's other brands out there which are sort of similar you know absolutely fine whatever ones you want to go for uh, but they do do a lot of different sort of types of sanding sticks they are sort of relatively cheap as well i mean a couple of quid for you know maybe a set of these sponges and a couple of quid for these sponges you know and they do last um, a fair fair while um, now when it comes to um, circular type pieces like this you do want to be using um, spongy ones right and the whole reason for that is is when you sand as you can see the uh, sponge will go with the curvature of the piece rather than um, say coming along and using one of these flatter sanding sticks the flatter sanding sticks could leave like a flat top in the curve which is not good so when it comes to doing these if you're not so competent with your rate uh, with your blade what I like to do is just shave off right just shave off a bit right just to get rid of sort of most of the tab until you've got like just that little bit sort of maybe left on the end of your piece and then you could come in with the sanding stick right because this is probably the safest way of going about it and for those of you who maybe not so experienced and then we can come in and just start to sand away until we sort of remove this tab right now this here is like basically a, a fine to almost a, a medium grit sanding stick and it's got a nice bit of a sponge as we've already mentioned but once you've got rid of most of the tab right you want to work your way down the grit so um you know i've gone sort of like a fine to medium this one is more sort of finer right so i'm going to sand away with this one which will be more and more finer and then what you'll also find is that these sanding sticks are quite cool because on one side you've got one grit on the other side you've got potentially another grit um, with this one we've got this sort of kind of like it's it's um, a really really sort of fine fine grit which basically finishes it off and what we can do is finish that there so what happens is is we end up right sanding away the little tab and then we restore the plastic back to its nice smooth finish um, and that's basically our sanding sticks there and sort of prepping all our pieces now what i want to do is actually before we start any gluing we've got a bit of modifications we can do with this with these little pieces just here um, and that is because these are road wheels right um, round the edge it's all rubber right in real life it's all rubber and these rubber road wheels will pick up stones and everything and these stones will like chip away at the rubber and chop up a little bit of rubber here and there so what i like to do come in with a blade right um, and what we do is we can just slice into this so we'll just slice one side and then we'll come down at another angle and we'll cut that little piece out there so it's a, probably a little bit hard to see because we are getting pretty sort of minute but i've just cut out a little chip there and then you know it's all about sort of keeping this random just cut into it and just cut a little piece out like a little chipped out bit of rubber all right and we could go along you know remember to keep this random don't try and sort of get into a habit of oh we'll put another one there and another one at an equal distance there and then another one at an equal distance there you know keep it really sort of random and um, all sorts of chips we can do light little chips like that little one there or we could even just go do you know what let's just really sort of make a big nasty chip here like it's had a big um, stone go into that one there and as you can see and that should you know um, once we've sort of painted this weathered it um, you'll see those little kind of chips out to the, the rubber and everything and make it look really sort of cool and that added little extra um, and Sadly, there is a hell of a lot of road wheels to do here So um, I've got a lot to sort of cut up tr trim up modify a little bit um, and then we can do some gluing